Hello and welcome. My name is Adonis and I'm a dead by daylight main about 5k hours in the game and I'm going to give you an honest review of the casting of Frank Stone. Spoiler alert, we're going to go over a brief synopsis of the story, just the intro, and then I'm going to give you my comprehensive review of what I think. So you start off as Sam Green, a cop in the early 60s who's on an investigation for a missing baby in the town of Cedar Hill. Said investigation has brought him over to Cedar Mill, a gigantic steel factory that has been around for decades and an area of interest due to its lofty space and apparent ability to hide bodies, babies, and countless secrets. You meet Tom Holt, who is pretty much the security guard for the night shift at Cedar Mill, and he grants you access to search the premises. Along the way, you find that Cedar Mill is housing a felon by the name of Frank Stone, who was charged for assault but had a sponsored release by a Dr. Augustine Lieber. Your search leads you to find a twerking dog snacking on a pile of what seems to be meat. Most likely human once you find there's actually an ear within the remains. This leads you to somehow trust a security guard and send him to your squad car with the ear in the hopes that this man you just met calls for backup on the radio. Tom now leaving us to fend for ourselves and probably die in this basement, we venture forth. And in said basement, we find the baby inside the furnace room with no other than the same Frank Stone we had just read about. A tussle ensues and we barely fight him off to save ourselves and the baby when we realize we have set forth a chain of events exactly as they were supposed to unfold. Frank was supposed to die here so that he can be taken by the entity and be made into an even stronger demon, creature, whatever the hell he's supposed to be. The story continues with three main storyline characters in the year 2022 and three main storyline characters in 1983. In the early 80s, you are playing the role of three teens with a passion for filming, looking to get the best scenes, which leads you to uncovering the secrets of Frank Stone and ultimately aiding him unintentionally to unleash his wrath on the world. In the year 2022, three random strangers are grouped together for one purpose. They all have a piece of that film that was captured in the 80s. Augustine Lieber, which should be a familiar name by now, has brought everyone together to get their piece of the film. They realize Lieber isn't quite what she appears to be, and they are way more in danger than they could have ever imagined. First and foremost, let's go over some of the pros. And some of the pros easily is going to be graphically. The game looks great. Supermassive Games always does an amazing job with making their games look amazing. Even if you look at Until Dawn, that game was made probably over a decade ago and still graphically looks pretty darn good. And I can't wait for them to make the remake, by the way. If you did get the deluxe version, you will be treated to a plethora of new outfits for Sam looking like Black Dracula and Chris looking like a patch of lettuce. The 80s theme and the theme of the 2022s, they both look really good as well. If you're in the 80s, you're going to see the Cedar Steel Mill, which is very dark, dreary. You're going to go through a lot of tunnels. You're going to see the, the Steel Iron Factory. I think it all looks amazing and did they did a 10 out of 10 job. I think in general, the game is so short that you don't get to traverse too much of anything on either timeline, but still what they've given off, I think works dramatically well second to that i think they also did a great story i i love anything with time travel if i'm honest i think the idea of them living in the past and creating a monster that the future them or future linda at the very least is going to have to deal with is a very full circle story i i did enjoy that i enjoyed the lores in between where we would read the articles of how people were dying the backstory and learning more about frank stone the way augustine lieber had all these different dimensions that she was traveling through and whether she was traveling through tvs or the time machine or even thought there's a book that talks about your you're able to travel with your own mind and live in alternate universes that are similar but not quite the same i enjoyed all of that i think not long enough so that i can really appreciate it because the game was pretty short i would say between five to seven hours depending on how much of a trophy hunter you really are but overall it wasn't a bad story and obviously all the amazing nods to dbd if you saw the scratch marks first of all they looked amazing the way they would actually light up behind you was actually pretty dope and a little bit unique to the version that they did for this game as well is awesome the plunderer's instinct that you would get where you can see the little which is a nod to one of the perks in dbd you can see the little 
the little chest so that you can open it up and get this little trinket the trinket that also be an add-on for a killer there were 12 that you had to get i thought that was pretty awesome as well the little dolls that you would also see of huntress of spirit of trapper etc i i can see them coming as charms for the hooks charms for the survivors and even real life plushies that people will definitely get in the future they looked amazing i think one thing that is absolutely breathtaking and almost just <gasps> makes you want to scream when you first see it is a gen as silly as that sounds when you first see a gen something that listen at 5k hours when i'm looking at these freaking gens i was like i can't believe it the gen in high definition it looks so crazy i think they did a stellar job i even had to blow it up one time just to see what the animation looked like it was great it was great even sable's cup uh, was in the game early on when you first start off with Maddie. The DBD lobby music even makes an appearance. If you're also paying attention, there is a part where you're in the thrift store and you're in the manor. There are two TVs. When you're first in the thrift store, you see a TV that's on and it looks oddly familiar. It looks just like a hallway that would be in that manor that you're in in 2022. But you're watching the TVs from the 1980s. So it kind of throws you off a little bit. And then a couple hours in the future, you get to see that same TV from the other side, letting you know that that lady at the thrift store might not be so friendly. All right, and now let's get to the cons. I'll be honest, I am not a fan of jump scares. I hate jump scares. In fact, my stream typically wants me to play any game with jump scares because they love seeing me jump scarily. And this game didn't have enough. Matter of fact, this game almost didn't have any. There's only one that I can remember, and it was this one. That's good, man. These dolls... <laughs> that singular jump scare came so late into the game, and it was nice, but it was the only one that I can genuinely remember from the entire game. There are countless times I am going around waiting for jump scares to happen. And after four hours, I'm like, I, j I guess it doesn't, it's never gonna happen. I was so relaxed at one point just because I figured they were never gonna come anymore. There was no threat of exploration. If I explore, it didn't mean that anything was gonna happen. I think I was, I, I felt pretty safe the entire time because I was never punished for doing anything. If I ever went through a tight crevice, there are other super massive games that you would have been jump scared a million times over. Let me show you a couple. The differences between this game, Frank Stone, versus some of the other ones. You're gonna pick it up, dog. <laughs> By the way, Chris, I'm playing DBD next. I think this is the end of this chapter. And then I'm, I'm picking up the rest of this game tomorrow, but I can't take any more jump scares tonight, dude. I need some DVD in my oh, Dude. Dude, I'm gonna get a jump scare here. Dex! <laughs> Left or right? Right. Who my oh. fuck me in the right? A good distance is all we need. I also believe they just showed Frank too early. Is it just me? I wasn't a fan. Typically in these games, you don't know who the threat is, what the threat is till later. Something about the mystery of it all is what really sells the horror game. If you know immediately who it is, where it is, there's one part that you're not trying to solve anymore. And I think that's so important to a horror mystery game. Seeing Frank Stone and knowing how he dies and knowing that it's him that's coming back, we just have to figure out how to defeat him isn't as fun as finding out who it is to begin with. Does that make sense? I wish they would have done something else. I wish Frank Stone would have been, we didn't know who it was until way later in the game. Maybe they could have hid that so we could have figured out who it was. Maybe it was an alias and maybe it would have been Sam the whole time. Maybe it would have been the baby ended up coming back and just being real life Frank Stone or something. I don't know. And speaking of which, who the hell was that freaking baby? They never, maybe it was a storyline that I didn't get to complete myself. Who the hell's the baby? They never touched back on that, right? Is it just me? 
the baby was just lost. It was just a random baby in a cellar. Sam never even talked about. Was it Sam's? It couldn't have been. Who the hell was the baby? That threw me off so much. I was waiting for it to find out. Was it Jamie? Was it Chris? Was it somebody from the future? Was it Maddie? It could, wouldn't have made sense because Maddie would have been old as hell. Either way, it's just so damn, so damn confusing. Also, Merlin, a jump scare that I was waiting, waiting for in the beginning of the game. Merlin never jump scared me. He never came out. He never came out. He just did his own thing. We saw him literally one time twerking for me, and then he left. He just disappeared for the rest of the game. We find his collar at one point towards the end, but it meant nothing. It meant nothing. Merlin was just nowhere to be found. An easy quick time event that could have been used to keep us on our feet, keep us scared, keep us worried, keep that anticipation, that fear. And I was fearless because they never threatened me whatsoever. Speaking of QTEs, where the hell were they? I, I mean, for playing this game for almost seven hours, I think we got a couple QTEs that were atrocious in the beginning and a couple towards the end. The middle barely had anything. Um, I want to say for seven hours of gameplay, maybe I got 20 total QTEs. And I want to say a good portion of those were not in high stress situations. I think a big part of the game is not only the story. I, I think story is important and I think they had a good story. But I think is the, the gameplay itself, the involvement, the fear, the anxiety that you want to have the, the, the gamer feel. It was never felt. I felt somewhat bored after a while at one point you're just playing for three four hours and it's like oh wow i haven't had a qte in four hours i'm not lying here i'll show you what some of these qtes look like they the the best ones were towards the end but it was too late the game's over now also the game was just kind of short it was about seven hours i'm assuming that has to do more so with the budget all of this, by the way, is going to come back to behavior and probably the budget that they gave Supermassive Games because I know what Supermassive Games typically feels like and this didn't, it felt like a watered down version, uh, a shell of its, of its former self. This wasn't a full, this felt more like a demo. It felt like the budget, let's say, was 10 million. They only had a budget of maybe 5 million, so they couldn't put the full game through. Does that make sense? I also didn't like that if I did go back, because I did, and I wanted to play other portions of the game. I wanted to see the other choices that I could have made. I couldn't skip a singular cutscene. Every single one I had to watch. And I think truly it's just because behavior didn't pay for that. Behavior didn't pay for us to be able to skip cutscenes because I could have sworn in Supermassive Games before that I was able to do that. So if you want to go back and play other pieces of the game, unfortunately, you have to watch everything all over again. So if it's seven, five, seven hours that you play, you got to do the whole thing again. So I didn't opt to play the beginning portion of the game, but only pieces towards the end where I didn't have to go through too much dialogue. Something that is innate with Supermassive Games is also premonitions. I think, again, because of the budget that Behavior probably gave them, there were zero premonitions in this game. Premonitions typically being that you will find some sort of painting, a card, or something that will show you a future death scene that you could possibly avoid. They did not exist. There was nothing. There were no premonitions. It was just straight gameplay, a lot of reading, and very minuscule jump scare, one jump scare and like five QTEs total. A lot of our choices also didn't feel like they mattered. You have a choice at one point to walk towards the steel mill from two directions. You can either choose a route that is closer to Robert's father, Sam Green, right? The, the sheriff, his route of patrol, or you can go the longer way around. So because I went for the content, I said, let's get crazy and try to go the 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 scarier, the the more threatening way. Right. Nothing happened. A cutscene ensued, but I could not control. There wasn't a QTE for that moment. It just didn't make sense. But they had a, a QTE in the future for picking up a piece of paper from the floor, but not for that moment. What? For me, also, the love story wasn't deep enough. I feel like we didn't get too much of a love story between Chris 
and Jamie. And aside from that, Linda and Jamie are supposed to be best friends. I never felt that friendship. It almost felt like she was the odd man out and she was just the cameraman. It didn't feel like a true friendship. The beef between Jamie and Robert was also so forced. Robert at one point asked Jamie, hey, why is it that you didn't ask me to, before to join the club? You know, I could be an asset to this. And Robert just destroyed him saying, well, your girl rather not hang out with you and work. That's your fault, not mine. It, it was just uncalled for and came out of nowhere. So even that friendship was so random. Some of the worst QTEs and I can't even call it a quick time event was that camera where Frank Stone finally came out and what you're supposed to do is point your camera in a specific direction and hold M1. It is so reminiscent of just holding M1 on a generator. It, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I think it was a very boring way to get rid of that. I think if you go to other quick time events and times of stress in supermassive games, they do not, in fact, implement things like this. I will show you what they look like, how much scarier, how much fear you have in your heart when you're using those QT QTEs versus this one. Oh my God, I can die here. Triangle, square, circle. Oh my God, dude, this is so stupid. Dude, I'm jumping. Come on, baby. Triangle, oh my God. Is there even a point in going the fast way? She still died anyway. Oh. What the? F Go right. I don't know. Is that Beth? Put the thing down. Are you kidding me? Let's go! Who is it? Collectibles also mean nothing, by the way. If I collected almost everything in the game except for that one trinket that was on the right path, everything, you don't get extra skins, you don't get an extra ending, you don't get anything for it, you just collect them. So there's no reason to go out of your way to collect anything. There's no reason to actually explore. And when I went back and redid some of the scenes, they just reskin the cutscene if somebody dies. So if Maddie dies and Linda's left alive, she gets a specific cutscene. If Maddie and Linda are both alive, Maddie gets that cutscene and Linda doesn't get any quick time event cutscene cut at all towards the end game. Also, I understand that, you know, skill checks are a thing in DBD. I get it. But not having Q, W, E, ASD, you know, M1, M2, all these other mechanics in order to get out of harm's way and quick time events and only having to hit spacebar every time really simplified the game and didn't make it very hard or stressful in those quick time events as well i think overall i'd probably have to give this game a six maybe even a 6.5 out of 10 super massive games typically makes amazing games within this genre i think they were just simply beholden to the budget that behavior had given them and could only make a again a bare bones version of the games that they typically make but let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, was it to your liking what rating did you give it yourself did it do enough for you because maybe you played DBD and the lore and all the trinkets and items, the collectibles that you'd find, they satiated what you were looking for, or did it fall a little bit flat as it did for me? Again, if you do want to see the full gameplay, it will be linked in the description below. And if you did enjoy this video, please do me a favor, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I will do some more game reviews and more of these games live on stream as well on twitch.tv forward slash Adonisaurus. 
Take care, guys.